Now, it is the second step, right? Uh, please read this example because we have to state step one hypothesis, the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So please read this problem. Um, Jack, I think he's like me, yeah, because I said my height is six feet. It's actually, I won't. I think he won't hit a drive golf ball 275 yard. You know, 275 yard is the too long yeah, drive shot, right? But how much was the average? His average is not 275. 25 tried, he tried 25 times, but average was only 264.4 yard. How much is the difference when I comparing to when I compare to 275? It is more than 10 yard. How do you think? 10 yard. My height, 10 inches difference, right? In his case, 10 yard driving. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I had a wind behind me. A 10 yard is nothing. But remember, 264.4 is on average from 25 drivings. Probably among the 25 times, he might hit the ball is a longer than 275. Why not? But the other way, sometimes he hit the ball shorter than 260. Why not? It's shorter than 250. Anyway, average from 25 times was 264.4. But he said, I can do 275. So we have to test if he is liar or not. It's good, right? So as I told you, always the null hypothesis is a, is a HO, is a mu is equal to what? How do you think, what? Sample mean 264.4 or 275. 275. Why? Who was the mu? Who was the symbol mu for? Population mean. It's not a sample mean, right? 264.4 is a sample mean. But now we need a population mean, the mu. So we have to state the mu is equal to 275. And also, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a space. Yeah, let me state the alternative one here. It's a mu and 275. So what is the inequality? We had three choices, not equal to, greater than, less than, which one? Not equal to, no. Please read the problem again. There is the key. We want to test he is liar. Less than 275. Clearly, we have to choose left one. Less than. Does it make sense, right? It was step number one. Now, let me give you the step number two. It will be test statistic. We need a test statistic which will be x bar who was x bar sample me who was a sample mean in this example how much 264.4 we are going to plug the sample mean is later 
minus the mu zero. Have you ever seen the symbol is a mu zero? It's not just mu, but mu zero. Before I stated, it's mu is equal to mu zero, right? So 275 would be the mu zero divided by sigma over square root of n. Just a second. Have you ever seen the sigma over square root of n before? Actually, it was standard deviation of x bar in chapter 7. Also, in chapter 8, we use the denominator sigma over square root of n when we made confidence interval in chapter 8, chapter, nine, chapter 7. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And now we can say it is, it will be a Z. So now let me plug, let me plug the values. Sample mean was 264.4. And mu zero was 275, the population mean. And now we need the population standard deviation. Where it is? It was given as 20. It's a 20 means it's plus and minus 20, right? 20 over how many trials? How many, how many times? 25 times. Sample size, 25. Please take the ratio. I mean, I'm sorry. Please take the difference, numerator. And please take the denominator, the ratio, separately. And take the ratio again to get the z-score. It will be the test statistic, please. Second step, test statistic. Negative 2.65. It is a z-score. Test statistic. Second step, z-score. What to expect next? Step three. I told you we are going to do again and again and again. Now we have a Z. Test the statistic. What will be what we are going to do in step three? Take a probability. Why not? From where? Z table again. That is a p-value. p-value, we are going to take a probability from the z table, not the t table. We are going to take the p-value, a probability from the t table later because it is the same thing. We use the sigma and sigma was given here. The population standard deviation was given. What does it mean? You know, practically, we don't know how much is the sigma. But sigma was given. Again, like as a chapter 8, we assume we knew the sigma first. Then we take a test statistic, the z-score. What do you expect later? We are going to say... Sigma is unknown. Absolutely, we are going to use the S sample standard deviation. And we are going to take the T-score for the test statistic. And we are going to take the probability, not from the Z table, but from the T table. 
So like as the chapter 8, in chapter 8, we had two kinds of confidence intervals, using the Z or using the T. When? We assume we knew the sigma or unknown. It's the same thing. We are going to have uh, two kinds of test hypotheses in chapter 9. Sigma is unknown. I'm sorry. Sigma is known first now. And the second topic will be unknown. But, but either one has uh, six steps. So step number three, we are going to take a probability, p-value.